Hello guys and welcome to my channel. My name is Milos and I'm a creator of original maps which I regularly post on Instagram and Twitter. I use R to create maps and to write mapping tutorials that help others make sense of big data. According to Node Excel, I'm a top 10 data viz contributor on Twitter. My projects are open data, so you can find them on the GitHub page and my personal page. Over the last nine years, I created a few hundred maps to raise awareness of socioeconomic issues and some interesting geographic patterns. I know that working with R can be frustrating, so I created this channel to share my rich experience with you. In today's video, you will learn how to create river maps using HydroShed's data. Let's roll. So guys, in today's tutorial, we're going to create a river map of Europe. And for that purpose, we're going to use the HydroShads database, which you can access at hydroshads.org slash products slash hydro rivers. This database is very interesting because it collects information on global rivers with a certain catchment area. It has information on all global rivers, a uh, size of a few million kilometers. And it also collects information on their names, uh, on their river basins, and or the order of size. Also, if you want to scroll down, you will see also a very, very beautiful image of global rivers. What we would like to do in this tutorial is create something similar for the extent of Europe. Also, if you scroll down a bit further, you will notice even more interesting things. Technical documentation where you can check the way this data was, uh, was created, as well as its methodology. You will also see license, as well as the way to attribute this data. Now, what we are mostly interested in here is getting the data itself. And if you scroll even down, you will see a list of all possible files. As I said, it's a global data set. So first thing first, you can get a global data, but you can also get rivers per continent. And in our case, we are interested in the Europe and the Middle East file. Um, we will be using the shape file here. So we are interested in this part, Europe and the Middle East, which is a shape file. Uh, in order to download this data, we need to get a proper link to it. So just hover over this uh, link or this button. And then in the lower left corner, you will see the link to the actual data. What we will do next, if you're on Windows, simply click right and then just copy link address, which we will then use in R to automatically download our river data. In this tutorial, we will use only three libraries, and these are going to be HTTR, Tidyverse, and SF. HTTR is used to get a response from a server to download the data we need. Tidyverse is an umbrella package, which will also include ggplot2, but which we will use for mapping, but also some other libraries for um, data wrangling, such as, for example, dplyr. And finally, SF is a standard R library, which is used for working with vector data. So what we're going to do here, first of all, we're going to define the libraries we need. Second, we'll then tell R that if these packages are not installed, to install them. So we have them installed already. And finally, just to apply, to load the libraries that are now installed. So as you can see, Tidyverse has a bunch of other things here. All right, in the next chunk of our code, we're going to download the data. So first, we will paste that link to the European rivers uh, in our clipboard. And then we will define an object res, which is going to actually apply the HTTR get function on this URL. So it will basically call the server and tell the server we need this uh, Hydro Reverse zip file, and this is the link to it. And finally, we will define the name here, which is going to be eureverse.zip, and define the progress. Then in the next stage, we are going to unzip this file, which is called eu underscore rivers. And once we unzip it, we will then define the file names that come out of that. And of course, they need to have a pattern SHP, which is an acronym for uh, the shapefile. So let's do that. 
first of all, so we run this function and then we actually apply. So as you can see, there is a progress here bar and it's downloading, downloading, downloading to our hard drive and that's it. All right, so we fetched the file names that we just downloaded. And if you simply run this file names object, you will see uh, the name of this file. You will see that it's a shape file and you will see that it's nested within this, uh, this Hydro Reverse uh, V10 EU shape file directory. So what we actually want to do next is we want to use this information, these file names, we want to call it, and then we want to apply uh, shapefile read function from SF, which is called ST read function. So in the next chunk, uh, what we do is we create a list read object, object, which is going to be basically just a list of file names. In our case, we just have one uh, file name, which is Hydro Reverse uh, V10 EU shapefile. Um, and then we, what we want to do is we want to take the first member of the list, which is this shapefile, and then we want to convert it into a multi-line string. Currently, as it stands, this file, once we read it into R, it's going to be full of line strings, so basically individual lines, and multi-line strings, which are going to be interdependent lines. Since we're talking here about a river network, that means that all the lines are interdependent. They're part of a network. This is, anyways, also the definition in this rivers database. So we want them to be all a uh, single class object with this, which is multi-line string. So once we do that, and then we apply this function, uh, it's going to take a bit while. But then once this is done, and you want to check this one, and to see what are the actual columns uh, in this shape file, you will notice uh, the richness actually of this database. As I said at the beginning, uh, this database collects information on reverse river IDs, also, it gives information what is the main river in this basin, but at the same time, some other really cool stuff. For example, the length in kilometers of this particular river, then the distance, then uh, the size of this catchment area. But also for us, a very, very important column here is the ORD underscore flow, which collects information about how major this river is in terms of the size, of course, in terms of the length, and whether it's one of the main rivers. In the next following chunks, we will use this information to create different widths of our rivers so that when we map it, we don't go, get overwhelmed with the number of different rivers. We will give priority to those rivers which are biggest and then decrease the width of our rivers as we go down in this class. We will do so by explicitly stating what is the width of our rivers based on the ORD underscore flow column? So in the next chunk, uh, what we will do is we will use the object which we already created, which is EU underscore RIV. And then we are going to use one really cool function from Dplyr, mutate, which is going to help us create a new feature, which is we're going to call width. And width is going to be based on the ORD flow. Now, what is very important before you even jump into this, it's very, very important that you check the actual distribution of the width so that you can then know what kind of values you are going to attribute to each of these widths. So before you even start doing this, the most important thing is try and check the summary of the ORD flow column. So in our case, we already did that. And what we found is that the minimum value is 3, so and the maximum value is 10. Now, in this database, the minimum value means actually, so if it's order, it means the highest order. So the highest order here is 3, that would be uh, the, the largest river, and the lowest river level is 10. Accordingly, we will use another really cool function from Dplyr, which is called caseWhen. For those of you who are familiar with SQL, what this function does is, based on the condition that you provided, assign certain values. In R, this is implemented in a way that you basically say, for any column that you have, if it has a certain value, if it's equal to a certain value, then assign it a certain other value. 
And this is exactly what we do. So for those rivers that are high in the order, we give the highest possible width, which is possible in, in ggplot2, which is 1. And then as we go down, we simply decrease this. You will see later on when we make a map, what this does is it creates um, a nice view of rivers in such a way that those rivers with the highest order, they're going to be thicker. And as you go down the order, they will become thinner and thinner. So once we do that, a very, very important thing is, is to convert whatever you get here, convert it back to an SF object. And to do that, you will use st underscore as underscore sf function now once you apply this function and create this e rib width object what you will essentially get is the same shape file with one addition there will be a new column so if we inspect this it's the same one but now you see it has a width column just a few more steps before we finally begin making our map and as you remember from the beginning, we basically downloaded the shapefile of Europe and the Middle East. What we want to do here in this next step is limit our view to most of Europe and to some extent the Middle East. So we need to define a so-called bounding box, which is simply a rectangular polygon, which uh, limits the view of what we have. So in order to do that, we first need to define our coordinate reference system. So we will be just using the standard one, WGAs at 84. And then what we need to do is we need to define here uh, the measures of our polygon. So we need the maximum and the minimum longitudinal and latitude measures. Uh, in the first part, we define the minimum and maximum longitudinal values. And in the next one, we define the minimum and maximum latitude values. So uh, for the longitude values, it means defining from Iceland to the border with Kazakhstan, Russia's border with Kazakhstan, and the second one uh, from approximately Cyprus in the south to Scandinavia in the north. Uh, well, this coordinate system is not so exciting. It's quite boring. And... Uh, we would like to have another one. So in the next step, I simply transform into another one. Uh, here you can play with different options. R accepts also many, many other. The standard one for Europe is the Lambert projection. So you can also try that one. And finally, we create a BB object, which is going to be our new uh, bounding box with a new projection. So let's just quickly run this and see what we get. So we create the bounding box. And then if you open this bounding box, what you will see is, again, minimum and maximum values for the uh, longitude and the latitude. And again, uh, they have a bit different coordinate points because we transfer them into a new coordinate reference system. All right, folks, let's create this river map of Europe. In this tutorial, we'll be using ggplot2 package which is used for creating pretty plots and maps in R. If you're not familiar with this library, I highly recommend that you visit the dedicated website and check out their functions. Suffice to say, for now, we'll be using mostly GM SF function, which is used for plotting SF objects in R. In our case, our SF object is the EU rib width, where we define different widths of rivers based on their order of value. Essentially, we want to have rivers of different color, size, and their alpha or light values. So we will define also that here. In the color, we will put order flow variable, which is defining the order of the rivers, and we will use width to create the size of it. Finally, we will again use order flow for the alpha. Next, we simply define the bounding box once again and simply say that we will use this bounding box that we previously created. Here in the labs, you can also put the title and subtitle as well as the credits as indicated on the HydroChats website. Finally, because we are here plotting factorial values, so discrete values of the size, color, and light, for the color itself, we will manually define 
the color scale. So what I picked up here is just different shades of blue. You can also go wild here and use some other color palette. Apart from color values, we also define the size and we also define the alpha values. So for the size, we simply say that we're going to go from the smallest, which is null, to 0.3, which is not the thickest possible size, somewhere in the middle. And then for alpha values, we use the scale alpha manual. So we manually define how light, how visible our rivers are going to be. And for those which are uh, order of scale 3, they're going to be the most visible. And those which are order of scale 10, they're going to be the least visible with some different uh, light options in between. Now, once we have all this set up, we will then move on and create this map. So let's run this function really quick. So we get this one. And finally, we are able to save. And we have our map of European rivers. As you can see, we accentuated major rivers using a sharper color, more lightning, and the greater size of the lines. This gives a really nice effect in that you can really delineate even river basins. The next steps could be playing a bit maybe with this line size, but also with different colors, and potentially also adding separate colors per river basin. And that's all, ladies and gents. In this tutorial, you learn how to import river shape files directly into R and then use ggplot2 package to create a really, really cool map of rivers in Europe. Feel free to check the full code down below, clone my repo, reuse it, remodify, and as you see fit, do anything with the code. This tutorial opens up the doors for you to map other river networks from the same database. You can, for example, create a river map of Africa, Americas, Asia, or Australia. Try it out and let me know how it goes. In the meantime, I'd be happy to hear your views on this map and how it can be improved or extended to some other geographic realms. To do so, please follow me on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. Also, feel free to support my work by buying me coffee and check the link down below. Cheers.